Hey folks, the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 5700 XT is a great card. Compared to similarly priced RTX cards, it stands head and shoulders above them in terms of performance, and even compared to the more expensive 2070 Super, it comes very close to matching that card for about 100 quid less. And when solely looking at the 5700 XT range, well, the Nitro was one of those that stands out as being a great looking, high performing, and very quiet option one of the very best AIB cards you can buy. With that said though, it's by no means perfect out of the box, but thankfully for us there is plenty of room for us to tweak it and make a good card even better. But before we tweak, it's good to know how it ships its stock. Out of the box it boasts a boost clock of around 2GHz and an advertised game clock speed of around 1.9GHz. This is of course on the primary BIOS, there is another silent BIOS which can be switched on the card which promises to run the card a little bit slower and dial down the fans a bit to around 1400 RPM max, which is under half of the maximum speed that these fans can go at. Whereas the performance BIOS, it ramps the fans up a bit faster, but they do still stay well below 2000 RPM. So let's see how these two stock BIOSes perform by using the 3 d Mark stress test and logging the data from the card. Through the test, the primary BIOS averaged out about 1965 MHz, with a peak of almost 2 GHz, and the silent BIOS peaked at 1920 megahertz but averaged out 90 megahertz lower at 1875. The power draw for the primary BIOS averaged out at 214 watts in this test with a peak of 225 and the silent BIOS dropped this considerably to a max of 200 watts with an average of 193. So the question we've got today is pretty simple. With some tweaking can we get primary BIOS performance but with silent BIOS power draw or can we do better? So I'm using Wattman for this video as it's a tool set that every Every Radeon card user should already have installed. In Wattman, in its untouched form, the first thing you're going to notice is that everything is first and foremost greyed out. The Sapphire's zero fan speed on idle is in place. We don't want that though, we want as much control as possible, so we're going to toggle the frequency over voltage tab, the speed over temperature tab, and also turn off zero RPM if it doesn't do so automatically. Doing this will allow us to very simply be able to tweak the base profile of the Nitro Plus. From the voltage frequency curve, the baseline config targets 2034 MHz at just under 1200 millivolts. With the fan curve, we see a ramp up from around 12% speed at 50 degrees up to a maximum of 45% at 89 degrees. Now, tweaking the Nitro in Wattman is incredibly easy. First off, I don't really find any value in having a really low base fan speed. I've got other fans in this case, and 0 RPM does nothing to the audible noise compared to a low fan speed, as in its stock configuration this car's 45% max speed is still quieter than most case fans. Setting the minimum to say 30% and taking back the 45% max to around 60 degrees instead of 90 should allow us to stay at a higher frequency longer, as well as get more air through the cooler to cool the VRM and memory during gameplay, while still remaining more than tolerable. Now the RX 5700 series is still a bit picky when it comes to setting custom fan profiles, but to get around this I always try and set one control point really low in the temperature range, around 30 degrees or so, since the card is often going to cross this point fairly quickly, and that seems to be a good catalyst of getting the custom fan profile to kick into action. A side note for sure, but if you're having issues getting your Navi card to play ball with custom fan profiles, try setting the first point really low and let me know how you get on. Secondly, all we're going to do is keep the same 2034 MHz target clock speed and drop the voltage allowed ever so slightly, which should mean a cooler running GPU. Since we're still aiming for over 2 GHz, dropping the profile by 125 mV to 1075 should give us a good drop in temperature. Now your own 5700 XT might be able to undervolt more at these clocks, and of course if you're willing to reduce the target clock speed, you're also going to be able to tweak the voltage down further. But there is going to be a certain amount of lottery involved in what you're going to be able to achieve due to the silicon quality. 2 GHz at 1075 mV is not insanely ambitious though. 
and basically that's it, that's all we're going to do. I'm leaving the power limit at 0% and I've kept the memory speed at the same 14GB per second speed it ships with. So undervolted with a slightly more aggressive fan profile, all in all 5 minutes work. So what's the difference? Well, let's take a look at the clock speeds first off. Now incredibly, we see a much more consistent clock speed when undervolted as shown by the gold line. Max clock speed remained just shy of 2GHz like the stock performance BIOS, but by having much less variance, it actually averaged out around 20MHz or so higher at 1985MHz. Prior to the undervolt, both the GPU hotspot and GPU edge temperatures were fairly similar regardless of which BIOS you used, but with our tweaked profile we see a drop in the maximum temperature seen on the hotspot come down from 95 degrees on the performance BIOS all the way down to 81 degrees when tweaked. The edge temperatures took a similarly drastic fall down from the low 70s to 62 degrees. Not bad at all for a few clicks. When looking at the GPU voltage, instead of the erratic standard setup which sees wildly varying values, our tweaked profile is fairly linear, 1075 millivolts through the whole test, and it was actually around 25 millivolts lower on average than the underclocked silent BIOS. This obviously has a knock-on effect on power draw too. While our undervolted profile almost is the same max power draw as a silent BIOS with 199 watts compared to the silent BIOS's 200, the average across the test was a good bit lower, coming in at 183 watts on average compared to 196. Remember, we are getting more frequency than even the high performance BIOS, but we're averaging out over 30 watts less doing so. For what it's worth, having a cooler GPU has benefits elsewhere as less heat finds its way into the surrounding PCB, which results in lower memory temperatures and since the VRM isn't having to work as hard so supplying the standard 1200 millivolts, there's less heat generated here too. For a card that already runs well, being able to knock the operating temperatures down even more with a few simple clicks, well it's a bit of a no brainer really. It's still quiet and now it's even cooler and the flatter, more stable clock speed has meant even more consistent performance in games. Win, win, win. But hey, I'd love to know how you lot are tweaking your Navi cards, or if you're happy enough with the out-of-box performance. If you've any tips and tricks, feel free to share them down below. And as always, I'll just say thanks for watching, remember to do all the usual YouTube stuff, and feel free to share this video around. But for now, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below and in the next video.